um, next week I am releasing my own, one of my new books. It is called, thank you so much. <laughs> the book is called From Here to There, Making Successful Transitions. I believe really strongly that that is one area in life that people need to learn. They need to learn how to shift. They need to learn how to maximize seasons of transition. I also have a course on it called The Shift. I'm hosting the course at the end of April. You can find that on my institute, ecbenedictainstitute.com. You can take the course, The Shift, um, ecbenedictainstitute.com. I'm going to teach it live online at the end of April. But the book is coming out next week, and it's on transitions. How do you maximize your seasons? How do you know when you've entered into a change in seasons? How do you catch the wind of a new season? How do you maximize the momentum of the spirit? How do you make sure you don't lose the people that God has connected you to that are meant to bless your life in new seasons and even those in previous seasons? It's a, it's a very critical part of life, but many times we're ignorant about how to manage transitions. So I wrote the book just for you. Uh, make sure when it comes out, you buy the book and you read the book. So one of the things we do in People of Influence is we want to make sure that everyone who partners with us financially, we are also contributing to your life. To that end, we have set up something called the School of Wealth. So for everyone who partners with us in People of Influence, every month we get facilitators from across the world, um, leadership experts, captains of industries, um, people who are skilled um, in money and wealth creation and wealth management, people who have understood standing by the spirit on how to maximize wealth and how to build the kingdom. So at the school of wealth, you're going to be taught every month um, in a way that empowers you. So if you partner with us, you fill the form, we'll contact you, we'll enroll you in the school and for your lifetime, you're going to have access to the school of wealth. There is one more thing I want to tell you about and it's called the Go School. The commission says go into the whole world, preach the gospel. But I realize that many times we are not taught how to go. We want to go. We are told to go. We are consistently, it's consistently preached to us to go. But we don't know how to go. And so many times I hear people say to me, Ah, you see, how do you do it? Ah, when you go to this place, so what do you say? How do you find people? How do you galvanize people? And because in my heart, I'm like, you know what? You know, I'm, I'm a humble daughter of the king. I don't know. It's all Jesus. And then one day, the Jesus said to my friend, Will you stop that nonsense? My friend, raise your head. <laughs> Let us talk. He said, yeah, 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 I do it. But I also empower you. I tell you what to do. I tell you who to speak to. I give you strategies. I empower you with revelational knowledge. I tell you who to collaborate with, how to collaborate. I teach you how to navigate terrains. I teach you how to pray into the souls of nations. I teach you how to speak into the systems of nations. I teach you how to make warfare in a way that it, 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 it translates into a tangible outcome of souls saved and people being drawn to the vision. I have taught you about the mantle and the uniqueness of mantles and now you know how to follow and to ride with the speed of your calling. He said, so don't say you don't know, it's just Jesus, you know. And to that end, I said, okay, Lord, what do I do? He said, every time you have to go to a nation, open up the go school. And so let people join you when you go to the nation. So one week for two weeks, you get the opportunity to journey with me as I go to a nation. I will go one week before, we all arrive a week before, and we leave a week after. In the space of time, what will be happening is teaching and impartation. Every single day, I will teach you on how to rise up in your apostolic and prophetic call. I will teach you on how to be a nation builder. I will teach you about how to enter into territories by the grace and the hand of God. I will teach you about governmental prayers. I will teach you about the strategies of the spirit, how to collaborate with the angelic host that is set over lands and even the angelic host that is set over your life. Two weeks of teaching, training, hands-on experience. And so if you were in the Go School and you were with me here in Kenya, you would have had to deal with setting up a venue overnight. What do you do? How do you go about it? So these are the kind of things you will learn. And also there will be facilitators that will join us in the Go School. So it will not just be me. So I am encouraging you <laughs> to register for the Go School. I will open the Go School um, next week. So when you see it on my social media, I hope you follow me at Isigeneba. Yes, on Instagram. 
Um, when you see that we put up the Gold School Register, it's a school, so it's going to come at a cost because you have to be lodged, um, accommodation, feeding, and all the logistics, transport, and all those things. But just go ahead and see if it's something for you. And I pray that as the Spirit of God pulls those who it's for from across the world, God will be equipping a generation in the apostolic call in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today, I just want to speak real quickly um, over the nation of Kenya. And then I want to speak quickly um, into what the Spirit of God would have you know if you're going to rise up in the mantle of Deborah, which is basically an apostolic and a prophetic call. Um, over the nation of Kenya, um, there are a couple of things I believe that the Spirit of God is doing. The Spirit of God is raising um, prophetic people that don't just, they don't, they don't only give personal prophecies, but I see the Lord raising national prophets over this nation. And the Lord is raising national prophets who have the ability to see into the spirit concerning the next phase of Kenya and to be able to collaborate with the government on, of this land on the level of making sure that um, not just policies, but decisions as it pertains to the safety of the borders of this nation is preserved. And I know that the spirit of God um, is is also speaking about the raising um, of a generation of women. And the, the scripture that God gave to me was the woman in the synagogue who was bent over double. And the Lord began to say to me that this woman was in the synagogue, which at that time you recall our church of today. She was in the place where sermons were preached every single day. She was in the place where the Torah was read. She was in the place where the word of God was constantly being taught to people, yet she was bent over double, yet she was unable to raise her head. All she did consistently was watch the feet of people, but she was never able to stand up and to, to use her own feet according to what she saw saw as a sense of direction and the Lord said to me in this season I am causing a deliverance a wide scale deliverance and liberation to happen in the lives of my daughters in this land and the Lord says no longer would it be said that you are in church and you are a Christian but your life is bent over double basically to be bent over double is you have the potential to have a strong posture you have the potential to be able to stand up tall confidently but because of the troubles and the struggles of life you are unable to to maintain the right posture and so the reason why the mantle of Deborah seems strange to a lot of people is because life has limited you in many ways and life has made it impossible for you to be confident in the very things that you know God has called you to but the Lord says I'm changing all of that God says, I'm causing the wind of real liberation to blow over my women, over my daughters. And I'm causing them to stand up strong in this season, says the Spirit of God. And even in this season, the Lord is going to raise men and women of wisdom and understanding, people of the caliber of Daniel, people of the caliber of Nehemiah, people who is going to give national strategies on how to preserve the inheritance of this land. We know that the world is changing and we can see the nations playing different cards. We see the collaboration between Russia and China. We see all of these things that are going on everywhere. We see the handshaking going on with the, between the Middle East and between the Middle East and China. And we know that there is a move of power. There is a shifting of global power that is going on right now in this season at this very time and I want you to understand that every time there is the shifting of global power what happens is that some nations come under the rule of some other nations either intentionally or either they are forced into it but the spirit of God says that he's going to use Kenya as an example of a nation that enters into liberty when others are entering into captivity and God is going to do it by the hand of Daniels God is going to do it by the hand of Nehemiah's that he's going to be God, he's going to cause to become experts on how to build walls of defense around this nation. And God is going to surround even the authority with strong voices that have the capacity to speak the will of God in season and out of season. And the Lord says, I am going to do this because I have called Kenya to be a hub of revival. And I have called Kenya to be the first runner in the coming revival. And the Spirit of God says, because I have called it to be a first runner in the coming revival, I have an investment in the liberty of this nation. It cannot afford to be in captivity. It cannot afford to be behind the play that is going on right now. So the Spirit of God is going to cut courage and boldness to come even on the level of government. 
so that certain decisions that other nations are too cowardly to make, this nation is going to make it and is going to become a voice of defense for the rest of Africa. And so, Father, we thank you because it is happening even now. And we pray for the government and the leadership of this nation. And we ask, Father, that in this season, oh God, you would garrison the leadership of this land with wisdom, with counsel, with truth, and with courage. So that when the wind blows, and when you say, beware of the danger of the bear, this nation will know how to shield itself from the danger of the bear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Because it is the season of the rise of Kenya. It is the season of the rise of Kenya to become a hub of defense, to become a hub of technology, to become a hub of leadership, to become a hub of truth, to become a hub of godly governance, to become a hub of deliverance, to become a hub of women empowerment in Africa. Because the season of Africa is here, but there must be first runners and Kenya is God's first runner. And so, Father, we sow into this nation in the spirit. And we declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that these things that you have declared concerning this land, oh God, none of them will fall to the ground. But in this season, we will hear news upon news upon news. In a time when CNN and Fox News used to carry news about America, they used to carry news about the UK. All of a sudden, Kenya is going to be on the front line of the news stations. International news stations will have things to say because there's going to be a rise of the Boris with voices out of this land all of a sudden they are going to be interested in interviewing you interviewing you interviewing you because all of a sudden you would realize that God has put a shield around Kenya and the purpose for the shield is for such a time as this the law says you will sow little and you will reap plenty and he says, I'm causing a new kind of season to come over this land. And God says in the season where they said there was drought. God says in the season where they said there was emptiness. God says in the season where they said there was no rainfall. God says in the times where they said we planted but we did not get a harvest. And the Spirit of God says, I am touching this land even on an atmospheric level. And I am breaking the veil of witchcraft. And I am breaking the hand of the sorcerers. And I am breaking the hand of Haman and those who manipulate the atmosphere around Kenya and the spirit of God says even your weather will respond to the word of the Lord and the Lord says in the season where they say there is famine many will run to Kenya and say we will give you our land we will give you our nations if only you will feed us for I see coming out of this nations people who are going to have new technologies around agriculture and famine people who are going to have new technologies around storage and preservation of grain and food for a generation and the spirit of God says in a time when they said we wear a begging bowl indeed we will be a bread basket and that prophecy is about to come to pass in Kenya and so I say to you if before now you did not have land by land because this nation is about to become fruitful this nation is about to discover that there are certain grains that can grow on your land if you are in the field of agriculture just raise your hand father in the mighty name of Jesus we pray for this people my God God, I ask that you will cause supernatural ability to come upon them. Holy Spirit, I ask, oh God, that you will superimpose the mind of heaven over their minds. I call for divine partnerships. I call for divine collaboration, even with the agricultural hub of heaven, to partner with these ones in the season. That in the mighty name of Jesus, you are going to use them as the Josephs that are going to change the terrain of this nation. You are going to use them as the Josephs that will preserve this land in honor so that when others will sell their destiny for a pot of porridge because of what you will bring forth by reason of this once, nobody in this nation will have to sell their destiny for food in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sudden development is about to happen.
in the areas when people have said you know what don't bother buying land there because there will be no extension in territory and I saw people flocking into this nation I saw different nationalities coming in suddenly and they were not entering only to the areas where you have beaches but they were going to the places where you call villages and you call inaccessible and the Lord says I'm about to cause the lands that you bought in previous season to increase in value because of the sudden investment that is about to happen in the nation I need you to understand something the Bible declares concerning Haman that Haman for 12 months from the first month to the last month Haman was consulting with his sorcerers to know the best time to approach the king and I want you to understand that by the time Haman got up and said it is time to go talk to the king Haman had prepared himself by peeping into the spirit the things that I say to you I say by the spirit of God and the Lord says them because there are some Hamans that have gone to search out the destiny of this land and they have discovered that all of a sudden a boom is about to come out of Kenya and so they've said to themselves it is time to go in buy it all up take their territories so that when the day of realization comes the sons of the land will pay us for what should be theirs but it will not be so father you prepare your church and you prepare your people for what is to come and so lord god almighty we will not act foolishly but we will be courageous and we will be wise and we will wage good warfare by the prophetic word that has gone ahead of us father i ask that you will give these people resources to buy now what is theirs so that when the day comes which is coming suddenly wealth shall spring forth out of your church wealth shall spring forth out of your people they will have a choice as to who to transact with in the name of Jesus Karina Sadebakai Soveli Braandes Kopalaha can I just pray for people who are into real estate that are here you are into real estate you're into real estate, just stand up real quickly. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these people that are standing on their feet. I thank you, God, because they have come into a season of visitation. My God, I ask, first of all, that you give unto them wisdom. I pray that you will cause them, oh God, to be accelerated in the spirit of wisdom. That, Father, these ones will have insight and understanding as to where and when to sow their seed. I pray Father that in the mighty name of Jesus that you will begin to lay on their hearts the places to go and the lands to buy up. Father I declare that these ones shall prosper and in the day when they have said to them oh come on your time is over nothing more can come out of you. I hear the spirit of God says no it's not true actually. What is about to hit is about to completely change your profile. Trust me I know what I'm talking about and I say these things by the spirit of God so Lord Lord, I ask increase abundance multiplication but most especially courage give them courage give them courage to negotiate the kinds of deals that other people will call them crazy for give them courage Lord Jesus to wait on you because you are coming and you are coming, oh God, to maximize that and the territories that they have mapped out in their name, but for your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because the days of outpouring are here. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. One of the first things you need to know if you're going to be able to walk in the mantle of Deborah, number one, you have to recognize that anybody who carries any mantle in this life is a person that has specially been commissioned by God, by Jesus as his messenger. A mantle is not speaking about something you enter into because somebody said receive it. It is a commissioning that comes from Christ himself. It is Jesus that commissions people because the Bible speaks about it in Ephesians chapter 4. He says that when he ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. And to some he made apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. 
And so some people said, oh, what is mantles? A mantle is not for the olden days. A mantle is not for the Old Testament. Let me help you understand. It is but a terminology. A mantle is speaking about a portfolio that you have in the spirit realm. A mantle is speaking about an operation in the spirit realm. A mantle is speaking about jurisdictional operation and power and authority that you carry. A mantle is usually unique and distinct to a particular kind of manifestation. So when we speak about the mantle of Deborah, we are not speaking about Deborah's spirit because that would be divination and we are not diviners. So Deborah is gone and she's standing with the spirit of men on the, the bear with and that testify from heaven concerning the things that God has done they are cheering us on to keep running our race so this is not about the woman Deborah this is about the dimension Deborah this is about the kind of things that she walked in and the gates in heaven that she opened and those gates are left open for another generation to enter into because the power of God and the capacity to defeat darkness that God does in a previous generation is yet possible for another generation. The only problem is that we don't have sons who know how to dig up old wells. Just because it was a well that was dug up by your forefathers doesn't mean the well is no longer viable. It's still water. And so when the Lord begins to speak about walking in this mantle, we are speaking about a commission that comes from Christ. Because even Deborah herself was in Jesus. She was married to Lapidot, and Lapidot literally comes from the Hebrew word that stands for lamp. And Jesus is the light of the world. So Deborah is a woman that is married to the light. Her commission, and that was why it was necessary for it to be mentioned in the book of Judges chapter 4. Deborah, the wife of Lapidot. So she had an intimate knowledge of the light of God. She had an intimate relationship with the lamp of God. She had an intimate relationship with the creator and the maker of the heavens and the earth. She was not Deborah that did the things that she did simply because somebody appointed her into an office. She did the things that she did because she was intimate with the light. Intimate with the light. It is impossible. The Bible says the hearts of men are in the hands of God. It is him that turns it like a water course. If you turn men's heart in any other way, by any other means apart from Jesus, then you are a manipulator and most likely a witch. And so for the hearts of men to respond to your calling, it must be by the hand of God. And so you must need the backing of God. And you must need to be um, brought into office and commissioned by Jesus himself. But I need you to understand what the commissioning of Jesus looks like. It doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus will come and appoint you and put a robe on your neck. It is great to have encounters. I have had several visitations with my master Jesus. I know what he feels like when he walks into a room. I know what his presence feels like when he feels a sanctuary. I know what his voice sounds like even when he's not speaking. I know Jesus. But the knowledge that I have of Christ is not because I have had visitations or visions of him. I know Jesus because I know his word. Because his word is the manifestation of his personality. Even if you know my face, it doesn't mean you know me. You have to experience me, walk with me, hear me to be able to say I know that woman. And so for you to be commissioned by Jesus doesn't necessarily mean you need to have a special visitation in the dead of the night. It just means that as you grow intimately with his word and you grow intimately intimately with the knowledge of his will it is the dimension and, and, and depth of the will of God that he expresses you to and exposes you to that determines what you carry men are ordained in our times by revelation it is what the Lord exposes you to that determines what you carry because if he does not show you himself you cannot represent him in that dimension so when we speak about the mantle of Deborah we are not speaking about a thing that we say run out here and take it and you take it mm, I have it, no that's not how it's released it is released by the spirit of revelation it is released by interaction with the Holy Ghost it is released when you go deep into the life of Christ in yearning, in searching, in crying, in desire as the Lord begins to break open to you compartments of his will for our generation you come into the capacity to execute that will you are commissioned by the word. You are commissioned by Jesus. You are commissioned by the spirit of revelation. And that commissioning is happening right now in this room.
Because as I speak to you, God is doing something in your life. Because the word of God made all things, created all things, and drew the boundaries of all things. Every time the word of God is preached in truth and in purity, what it does is that it begins to change the boundary lines in the heart of the man that hears the word. Every time you receive the word of the Lord, he stretches the boundaries of your capacity. He stretches the boundaries of your imagination, but most especially, he digs new wells of hunger in you. It is the hunger that determines the table that you eat from. And the table that you eat from determines who you are. Because what you eat is who you are. And so what the Lord begins to do when he wants to commission you is that he gives you a new spiritual diet. In the days when you were okay with sermons like God loves you, it doesn't matter, there is grace, you can do bad. All of a sudden your diet begins to change. Your spirit begins to get agitated with iniquity. Something on the inside of you begins to call and cry out for deeper levels of consecration. You go on a fast without even knowing you are fasting. It is when people tell you on the second day, have you eaten? You begin to calculate and you will realize you've not eaten for 48 hours because there is a deeper desire on the inside of you than the desire of the bread of man. When you enter into places like this, Kilanti Kazivra and Deka, the dimension and the expression of Jesus that you encounter in the spirit determines what you carry. So when I tell you it is all about Jesus, believe me, it is all about Jesus. It is not deeper that confirms the mantle of Deborah. Simply because we want to take care of widows and take care of women. That is not the confirmation of the mantle. I don't have to do that to know that I am ordained. I do that because I am ordained. I don't do works for identity. I do works from identity. Identity comes from encounter. Identity comes from revelation. And unshakable knowledge about Christ. This is what the Lord is releasing. So to carry the mantle, you have to be commissioned by Jesus. The next thing that happens to you, Kerada Sovra Inga Deleka Padi. To be able to carry the mantle is that God is granting you plenty potentiary status and powers. And you need to know the importance of this. Because a plenty potentiary is a person, especially a diplomat, invested with the full power of independent action on behalf of their government. Apostle Lee preached about um, emotional intelligence and preached about having hard conversations. But you know what I have found out by the Spirit of God? is that a person is never able to have hard conversations with his fellow man if he has not learned the culture of it with his God. It is when God begins to ask you questions like, Cain, where is your brother? And when the Lord speaks, what he speaks, but you hear a thousand things. Where is your brother? You know he's not asking for a physical location. He's asking for the day you walked out on him when you knew he was broken. He's asking for the day you told him, I don't have any money. When you had money and you could share what you had. He's asking for the day he hurts you. And because he hurts you, you refuse to help him to build his legacy. Where is your brother? God does not lay mantles, generational, national, territorial mantles upon selfish people. Selfishness is not just about money. Selfishness was what led Eve to sin. She saw that it was good for her food. She saw that it was profitable to make her wise. She saw that it was beautiful to her eyes. And Lucifer said to himself, I will elevate myself upon the mountains. I will set myself. You are selfish when you are constantly thinking about how to build for you. A man of God is a man who constantly bases his desires and all his ambitions upon the elevation of God. If you will have Inca, Suka, Paria de Kala, the mantle of Deborah, you must learn to put a knife to your own throat. The Bible says no man dies with kings and dies with his two hands. He says if you are going to sit upon the table of kings, you will use one hand to hold your cutlery and the other hand you use a knife to put it on your throat. Because you don't dine with kings eating with both hands. You'll be sent away from the table. The, hand, the table of a king is a place of promotion. But the table of a king is also the place of testing. Every time a king invites you to dine with him, the king is watching the way that you eat. 
to determine if he will invite you a second time. To determine if he can put a position of authority upon you. Maybe you will take it for yourself or if you will disseminate the wealth for the people. You cannot carry a mantle that is commissioned by the king of kings himself when you have not learned to put a knife to your throat. Your throat, the word that was used for throat in that scripture in Proverbs is the Hebrew word nefesh. And nefesh means soul, the soul of man. Anybody that is going to be able to dine with the king, to carry the mantle of Deborah, is a person that has made a culture out of circumcision. It is not just the initial foreskin. There is constantly, there are constantly foreskins that you remove. For every day that you are waking, you realize that there is yet a part of you that has to die. You don't wait for me to preach you that sermon. You stand before the king of glory and say, my God, if I cannot be naked before anybody else, if I cannot be naked before anybody else, but you, I must be naked. Because you see, nakedness was the empowerment of Adam and Eve in the garden. It was their nakedness that was the precondition for them to carry the glory of God. The moment they began to cover themselves with all kinds of things, the glory left them. Many people enter into Ichabod at the time when their destinies were meant to transition into mantles because they did not know how to be naked with the Lord. Difficult conversations are had in the place of nakedness. You bear your soul. You open your heart. Not knowing if the other person will ever respect you again. Not knowing if the ever, other person will ever trust you again. But you say it because you hope that it will cause reconciliation to happen by truth. A person that carries the mantle of Deborah is a person who is courageous at heart. The second, the third thing you need to note is that for you to carry the mantle of Deborah, God will craft you into being a person that is like a delegated spherical of principality over regions. You have to understand atmospheric and stratospheric warfare. I thank God for the kind of warfare that gives me beans, bread, rice, food, school fees. But you see, all of those things is like dealing with low-level problem when there is an overarching issue. The people that carry mantles are people that understand territorial warfare. Are people that understand how to draw back the destinies of nations. How to rebuke satanic altars that were established by the older fathers. People that will carry this mantle are people who will change their prayer patterns. And you will move from prayer points into prayer burdens and prayer projects. Because they are of different levels. A prayer point is the point that you can define. But there is a kind of prayer that has no definition. When you enter the ilini mukura, e, ah. Where you go in the spirit is defined by the burden the master puts on you. You don't enter the prayer closet with a predefined path. You find the path as you navigate by the spirit. The spirit of burden. The spirit of God tells you what to pray. And then you have the authority to rebuke on the level of nations. This mantle is for people who will dare to say God. I don't know the terrains you will take me into in the spirit. But wherever you go, I will go. I trust you with everything that I am. You need to understand the hierarchy of powers in the spirit realm. You cannot carry the mantle of Deborah if you are yet a spiritual illiterate. You have not learned about prophetic symbolisms. You have not understood the acts in scriptures that were used to lock the destinies of territories and the acts that were used to open the destinies of territories. Why did God tell them, pick 12 stones from the riverbed? Why did God not cause them to walk past another path? Why did they have to split open the Jordan? Was it just so that they would know that he is God? Or was there a significance to the opening of Jericho to them? Hey, hey, Zadea Gada. A person that carries the mantle understands that to wage war on an atmospheric, stratospheric level, God will have to command you to undergo certain acts that you may never be able to justify before laymen. You must be a spiritual man. Many people are Christians and born again, but they are very unspiritual. Carnal, but saved. Unspiritual. 
No understanding for the substance of the spirit. No understanding for the tangibility of spiritual things. How does it work? What does each thing represent in the spirit realm? If you will carry this mantle and you'll be able to wage war on this level, you must go back to the school of the spirit. Are we still together, Kenya? Hallelujah. The fourth thing you want to know is that God will back up your office with confirmations. You cannot carry this mantle and be a person that still despises signs and wonders. You cannot be a person whose power is solely based on intellectual knowledge. You must be a person whose heart is open to the intervention of the divine. Jesus said to them, go into the hall and preach the gospel. He said to them, deliver people. He said to them, cast out demons. He spoke about signs and wonders, raising of the dead, healing of the sick. Why was it necessary that men might believe? People don't consistently follow you simply because they like your face. They may come because they like you, but they stay because of the signs and the wonders they encounter in your life. You cannot be a woman that galvanizes on the level of nations, kings, rulers, governments, soldiers, and not be backed up by signs and wonders. The Bible says in the day that Deborah arose, even the river Kishon fought for her. It says the stars fought in their courses. Those that went to war knew that something else is backing up this woman. You must believe again for signs and wonders. I am standing here because I believe. If I needed proof, I would never do anything that God has commanded me to do. I may still be in ministry, but I would not be doing the work that God called me to do. Because I will be building within the confines of my little mind. The day you enter into the office of an apostle, is the day you drop your human natural thinking and you take the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ does not elevate from the level of the earth and the sand and the sun. The mind of Christ evaluates from the level of eternity. The things that are possible from the realm of heaven. Clap if you want to clap. And as you clap, let the Lord meet with you. Backed up by signs and wonders. A person that will carry the mantle number five must be a person that is willing to expose their position to the scrutiny of a council. The Bible says that there is safety in the multitude of counselors. You are not powerful because nobody can question you. You are powerful because after they have questioned it all, you have proven to be a person of integrity. So the people that carry the mantle of Deborah are not the kind of leaders that position themselves far from the people. And you become like the gods that they once served, that could not be reached, that could not be touched. For we have not come to that kind of mountain. The God that we serve is a God that we can ask questions. We don't question him, but we ask him questions. He answers us. If you will carry this mantle, you must be willing to dwell with counsel and counselors and in councils. To carry the mantle of Deborah. Number six, you have to allow God to make you a house. The Bible says in my father's house, there are many mansions then. Technically, a mansion cannot fit in a house. So you know that it is not talking about a normal house. The reason why it is called a house is because in the spirit realm, a house represents the zone and the expanse of what you have authority over. And it represents different compartments. It represents different allocations. It represents different spaces of authority. It, refers, it represents different kinds of creativity and capacity. If you will carry the mantle of Deborah, you must allow God make you multi-talented. In one minute, I am a preacher. In the next minute, I'm a teacher. In the next minute, I'm a project manager. The next minute, I'm talking light, sound, stage. The very next minute, I'm in the kitchen, carrying a on my chest and cooking. The next minute, I'm a nurse that is giving my son drugs at 2 a.m. 
I become all things at all times as it is demanded of me. But the thing about a house is that no part of the structure can afford to be weak. If not, it can take down the whole house. To carry the mantle of Deborah, Miss Atiga, you must allow the Lord balance your life. I was speaking to them yesterday at Dunamis. I said, please, do not be that kind of woman that your husband will come and say, ah, Pierre, you have to talk to this woman. Four months, she has not allowed me to do what? Hey, to come into her inner chambers. Auntie, but what happened? You know, actually, P.I., the burden of the spirit upon me. Pa! Which burden? Which spirit? Sweetheart, be a strong house. Be a strong house. And I'm not saying this from the place of foolishness. I'm not saying this because I have never experienced pain or anger in marriage. Don't get me wrong. I say this because I understand that I am standing under the rulership of the heavens. And the heavens don't respond to my pain, my fear, my anger. The heavens don't respond to how I think things should be done. The heavens respond to the rule of God. And the government of God does not change on your behalf. Simply because you don't like it. If you are there, then do the needful. Because as long as you are there and you know it, what is right to be done and do it, it not, it is accounted unto you as a reason for which Satan can come against you. Please, can I speak plainly? I told them yesterday at Dunamis, apostolic woman, apostolic woman, the night wear that you bought, the day you got married, that your friends gave to you as wedding night gift, seven years later, the night wear yet testify it of the things to come. The thing has torn here, torn here, torn here. Pierre, he's not faithful. Why? Unfaithful? Un what? Buy new ones. Change your wardrobe. Do your makeup. Look pretty and beautiful. Slay physically and spiritually. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's not an ugly mantle. It's not a mantle of body odor. It's not a mantle that does not package well. You hold all things together. Because you are carrying mantle. You pray, you spit, you won't clean your mouth, rub your powder. Come on. It's not right. Say, Lord, make me a strong house. Lord, make me a strong house. Why are you angry with me now? I see friends. It's not a poor mantle. Can I go there? You have to be resourceful if you're going to be a strong house. A house is run with money. Nobody runs a home without resources. Your life needs resources. I'm not talking about greed. I'm not talking about covetousness. Kaliakata. If you find it in you, fight it. Enter fasting, not for anything, to kill covetousness in your soul. The day you realize that when you stroll through Instagram, you see mantle of Deborah Kenya, mantle of Deborah Botswana, mantle of Deborah Houston, you just start to hate me for no reason. Just I'll say, every time how that person says, I don't know, there's just something about her. Ah, go and fast. Go and fast because I don't even know you. That's the worst part. I don't know you. And even if I know you, I'm not planning anything evil against you. You can't pinpoint what I did. Go on fast. I'm being real. Tell the Lord, Father, jealousy is entering my soul. Because until you can, you can, until you can name a thing, you cannot be delivered from it. That's why Satan keeps you from identification. So you just be going round and round the matter. I don't know. I don't really know. I can't. I just feel the heart of man is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Don't trust your heart. Trust the world. Because to carry this mantle, you need to be a strong house. And God will not entrust you with the wealth, whether physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, psychological, any wealth that you need to execute the mission if you have not learned how to journey with the Lord. You will not only be a strong house, but to carry the mantle, you must accept your leadership. 
You know, the greatest heartbreaks I've had in this life, let me tell you why. I understood it later. They happened to me in the seasons where I did not see myself for who I was. You know, people usually see you quicker and better than you see yourself. They come to you for what they observe. But if you meet a wicked man that sees you better than you see yourself, they will stay with you, plunder, and leave you dry. And then you will say, he broke my heart. She, no, it wasn't them that broke it. It was you. You did not enter into the revelation of who you are so that you could set the necessary boundaries that will preserve you. There is nobody that knows that he owns a gold mine that gives the key to just anybody. You cannot keep a hundred million dollars in your house and just hire anybody to take care of the house. That's the time that we come and say, ah, Uncle, why are you sweep? You say, no, I like to sweep. I, no, I sweep a lot myself. Oh, I grew up as a sweeper. No, let me help you. No, it's okay. Go to your house. Why? A hundred million is inside there. You give access too easily. Because you have no understanding of what you carry. You misjudge intentions because you don't feel the need to enter into the spirit to bring judgment because you don't know the value of what you carry. If you will carry the mantle, accept your leadership. Acceptance is not that you say consistently, I'm anointed by Christ. That's not accepting. You accept the sacrifices. You accept the pain. You accept the loss of people and you accept the gain of people. You accept the challenge of growth and you accept the challenge to always be the one that has superior knowledge. Because the leader is not the man that stands in front. The leader is the one that knows the most. So to carry the mantle, you must be ever growing. Accept your leadership. Accept it. That my life can never be the same as others. I may never have the same kind of family structure that other people have. The problem is my leadership. I am called to do the things that many may not be called to do. Accept it. If you will carry the mantle, you must be a person that knows. You must have knowledge about origins and history. Origins and history. Deborah said to Barak, did the Lord not say to you? We don't know if she knew it by reason of the spirit of prophecy or if she knew it because she was the one that gave him the prophecy 20 years ago. We don't know if she heard another person say God told Barak. But the most important thing is that she knew. You must be a person who studies. You cannot spend 10 hours on Netflix. Pluralizing Netflix is the souls of men have died on the altar of Netflix. Can we go there? If I shake the table, will you come back for Mantle of the Emperor next year? Hallelujah. The souls of some people have died on the table of Netflix. You watched one crazy movie and you decided that your sex life is no longer okay. And the next time, Lapidot came with the light of truth and purity. You say, Lapidot, hang me on the truss like floodlights. And Lapidot says, Sister Debbie, how can these things be? Are we still together? So Lapidot is laboring now to lift like cream. Lapidot has even entered and backslidden into pornography because Debbie baby has seen the thing that her eye was not supposed to see. Mantle. Somebody say this mantle. This mantle. If you were carried, the time you should have spent learning demonic things. What use is it tampering with a thing you are not willing to engage with? Who carries fire to his chest and thinks he will not be burnt? You are watching all the movies you have watched in the past one week. It's about adultery. It's about the dissatisfied handmaiden. It's about uh, the one who slept with her maid. It's about, and you think you will not commit adultery. 
Satan is an investment banker. He understands how to invest in the souls of people. He will be giving you bit by bit. One day, he goes to catch, catch the check in the form of a sin and your ATM will just be delivering. Let he that thinketh he stand, take heed unless he falls. Taking heed is not saying, hmm, God forbid, that's not taking heed. Taking heed is that you are skilled. You can tell when the serpent is about to breach your boundaries. Constantly watching. The day you wake up and there's this kind of emotion coming out of you. That, ah, 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 what is this thing? My husband has only two packs. But now, six packs is hungering me. Ah, Debbie. Go on fast. One week dry. Dry. Your eye will clear. Hallelujah. I'm giving you strategies for preserving the mantle. May the enemy not disgrace us in this life. Take heed. Take heed. So the time you will be using to know rubbish, use it to read about Africa. Read about the nations of the world. Spend time on the news. Me, I'm single. If my husband was here and I heard me say, you say, uh-huh. And say, what are you preaching? Because I'm growing. I, I, I downloaded news apps on my phone and gave them notification. Uh, you are free to alert me on news. Be telling me. I don't follow everything, but I need information. Origins and history. Apostles are learners. Deborahs are learners. They challenge people to constantly grow. They push above the mundane. The ninth thing you must be if you carry this mantle. Don't be tired though. Let me give you. The ninth thing you must be is that you must be a builder. Many of us are strategic. We like activities. But we don't understand compound interest. We don't know how to bring it all together. Save it. Which one goes to labor? Which one comes as profit? Accumulate it and reinvest it. But make sure that by the time a season is over, you have erected something for yourself. You must learn to be a builder. Build your soul. Build your spirit. Build your heart. Build your mind. But build. Build. Put structures around little things. Let people say to you, ah, is it these small five people? That you are setting administrative role, you are setting spiritual role, financial role. Yes, is it this small ministry that has policy around accounting, Pastor? When you can do, no, you think it is small, but the person that looks at the the seed for an oak tree, we call it small, not knowing that someday it will grow up to be a mighty system. And by the time it has become a system, it is hard to change because it has established its weaknesses within the culture of the system. Now is the time to build. Building is not speaking only about the erected structure, but it speaks about the process. Big houses crumble overnight because of wrong foundations. Build now if you carry the mantle. Number 10. To carry the mantle, you must embrace and you must promote divine order. There's something in Nigeria we call scatter, scatter. You know Nigerians, to emphasize on things, they double it. So we say scatter, scatter, yama, yama, crow, crow, fear, fear, cry, cry. <laughs> Do you understand? We always say things twice to make you understand the weight of it. I say this to you because you cannot be a scatter scatter person. Scatter scatter means you are disorderly. You don't know what comes in, what goes out. You don't even have order around your relationships. Who are your 70? Who are your 12? Who are your 3? You don't draw concentric rings around relationships. That's why four people are fighting you now because all of them thought they were your best friend. You say things you don't mean because your tongue does not know order. Five people thought they were a spiritual father. 
Only for five of them to realize one day that none of them was your father. Ah, Deborah, what is going on? Say divine order. Divine order is not church politics. But divine order is the order that has been set up by God and backed up by the word. So to have order in your life that comes from the divine, you can find the root of the order in scriptures. To carry the mantle that will influence generations, you must know when something is off balance and you are never afraid to bring it back in place. You elevate order above the need to please men. You can confront in love. You can tell people you are trespassing a boundary line the same way you tell yourself because you are not fit to pluck out a speck in a person's eye until you've dealt with your log. To carry the mantle, you must be a person that consistently subjects himself to the sojourn of heaven. For every day that you wake up, he pulls out the log in your eye. To carry the mantle, number 11, you must be eternity minded. Eternity minded. And every day you walk in Christ's eternal power. A man whose vision or evaluation of power and glory and reward is for the things that he can get in this life can never carry authority on this level. Because you will always judge God as unfaithful. Because the God that said to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you, didn't give Abraham in Abraham's lifetime. The God that said to him, your seed will fill the earth as the sand fills the seashore, did not give him seed that filled the seashore like that in his lifetime. He says, Abraham saw a city afar off. That became his consolation, his hope, and the momentum for his journey. If you will carry the mantle, you must be eternity minded. You don't treat offense based on today. You treat offense based on the kingdom and the life to come. You reconcile people in the spirit to God. Not because you like them or you don't like them. But because you see that there is a burning fire in eternity. That is waiting for the person or for yourself. If you don't pray for them. Eternity minded. God will always judge what he can give to you or the weight of eternal things he can place on you based on your ability to evaluate eternity. Mantle carriers are intelligent, structured, and informative. But lastly, or not lastly, before the last thing, number 13, mantle carriers are collaborative. You can't carry the mantle of Deborah if you don't embrace the spirit of collaboration. Stand on your feet as I tell you the last thing. Somebody say hallelujah. Have you left the room? Praise Jesus. This is what it's all about. You must learn. If the part of a conference you like is the part where they say, somebody say, Louie, Louie, eh, 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 Louie, eh, Louie, ah, shake it, shake it. You are not ready for mantle. If the part of the conference you hate is when they say, stand on your feet. Then you say, oh, yeah, carry your bag. Let's quickly escape now. You are not ready. So stay back, that sister. Anointing is waiting for you. The last thing I want to say to you about carrying the mantle is that mantle carriers are people who have an intimate relationship with the resurrected Christ. It is your intimate relationship with the resurrected Christ that makes you a persuaded leader and a fervent worker. You have to know Jesus. Oh, you need to know Jesus. You have to know Jesus. You say to me now, ah, but Pierre, I know Jesus. No. If you know him, you will know that none of us really know him. If you know him, you will know that you have to wake up every morning and the first thing that comes out of your mouth is, Jesus, show me your face. Tell me about yourself. You see, all of this, they don't matter. If I build and I have no 
fellowship with the master, it is useless. The depth of fellowship is defined by the depth of secrets revealed. I'm not saying if you don't pray in tongues for 10 hours, no. But how much secret was delivered to you when you prayed? This is what determines how intimate you are. The reason why Delilah was able to take down something was secrets. Tell me your secret. Secrets define the depth of your relationship. John always called himself the one whom the Lord loved. And we later found out why. You then begin to realize that Jesus told him things that he didn't tell others. Secrets. How much secrets do you know about Jesus? What are the things he has told you? And when he told you, he said, shh, just between me and you. Do you understand? He called Abraham the friend of God. I believe we don't know everything God said to Abraham. There's a place that is bigger than a mantle. And that place is called Jesus. Raise your hand. Declare all over the whole your love for the master. Declare your love for Jesus. Declare your love for the king. Declare your love for the eternal one. Declare your love for the sovereign God. Say to him, Jesus, I love you, but I want to know you more and more and more and more. Empower me to make the needed sacrifices so that I will not walk away from you. I have learned about carrying mantles and walking in certain spiritual portfolios. Lord, don't let it just be a sermon that I heard, but let it become the reality of my life and the way that I engage with you. Father, break me open. Help me to come into it. Please help me. Sando brenge dia tabareka sude kapai, shira damareka zongre intele kaba, shande riba koske paradala deiso, shila na brenge dele te karaba hasati la dakaba, azo karaba shande rege dele besukre intele kaba. In the name of Jesus, that's why I sang that song this morning. When you walk with the Lord. In the light of his word, he shines on your way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and an old hymn. It doesn't sound like anything we sing these days but the words are loaded. He says there's no other way to find joy in the mantle except you trust and obey. If you rebel against the Lord, you don't trust and you don't obey. You're going to struggle. The thing that was put upon you that could have elevated you will become the thing that kills you. So to carry the mantle, you must resolve in your heart that you trust the Lord of the mantle. And anywhere he takes you, you will go. Can you make that prayer? And say, Lord Jesus, anywhere you take me, I will go. Anywhere you command me to go, I will go. I will follow you to the ends of the earth. I will obey you in whatever you tell me to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And so, if you are in this room and you believe in your heart 
after you heard the things that I said, that God has indeed called you to carry something on this magnitude that requires this much consecration, just raise your hand. I'm not the one that will give it to you. What God wants to give you is already here. You just have to see it. But I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers and I pray for my sisters. I pray for every single one of them, Lord God, whose heart you have stirred, whose spirit, oh God, has been captivated by your word of life to the one that has decided on the inside of them that they don't want to be the same again that they want to follow you that they want to know what it is like when a man makes Jesus his only option Baba, visit them with power not just any kind of power the power for transformation let it come upon you now in Jesus name the power for prophetic and apostolic imagination let it rest upon you in Jesus name the power to shift things and to move mountains let it come upon you in the name of Jesus I pray for you that because you are in this land Kenya will not be forgotten because you are in this land everything that God has designated for this nation will come to the nation in the name of Jesus because you are in this land God will cause another generation of revivalists men and men of wealth power and grace to come out of this nation by reason of the prayers that we pray in unity and trust in our master I say to you today that walk in the strength of your calling Walk in the strength of your ordination. What you do not understand, ask the Lord. Ask the elders and learn from scriptures. But do not draw back. Do not give up. Do not let any man despise you because of your age. Neither should you despise yourself. But from today, Deborah, rise up. From today, Deborah, awaken. From today, Deborah, stand on your feet. From today, soldier, take your position. From today, square your shoulder, raise your head, and let your voice break through the heavens. From today, receive boldness and courage. From today, believe that the Lord God Almighty has anointed you to preach the gospel. From today, soldier of the Most High God, heal the sick, raise the dead. Command those that are in captivity to be set free. From today, let your prayer life come on fire. Woman of God, follow the answer created by the Most High God. Come into the realm of spiritual strategies by which nations are delivered. From today, become the voice that you were called to be. Hallelujah. I rebuke the spirit of anxiety. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke the spirit of lie in the name of Jesus. If you are here and you have made a vow to any strange altar, or you have made a vow to any kind of spirit, and you have made a vow with your words, and you have said, I am a depressed person, I'm a sad person, I'm an angry person. Now get on your knees and repent. Because there is a new day that is upon you. You have made vows over your children. And you have said this one is a useless child. Today is the day of repentance. Because there is a new day that is upon you. Yes, God bless you for your humility. A new day is upon you. Begin to renounce every vow that you have made. Begin to renounce every vow that you have made. You say things like, you know me, I'm always in lack. You say things like, Pastor, you, say, you know it's you that have revelation. I never have revelation. What are you talking about? Renounce it. Begin to declare the will of God. You are a woman of revelation. You are a woman of understanding. You are a woman of power. You say things like, people don't like me. Renounce that vow now, right now, by the blood of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of any kind of demonic vow you made with your mouth. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of any kind of satanic engagement you entered into that is limiting you right now. And thousands my In the name of Jesus. And so Father, and so Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we break the hold and the shackle of death 
and the satanic kingdom over the lives of your people. Even as we have renounced by faith, I decree, O oh God, let the new day come. Let the new day come by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus.